Hi guys, uh, so today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I've got this huge stack of physical paper notes that I would like to convert into SuperMemo elements. And um, you're probably wondering why I have this huge stack of physical notes. And the only answer I can give you is that I am a caveman. Um, so obviously uh, these physical notes, huge number of disadvantages. Um, number one, can't use control F to actually find anything. Um, they're completely unprioritized. I mean, this stack, the order doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, so we're really, truly going to be trawling through the sewers of my mind, trying to find uh, cream in the dirt. Um, so I figured, you know, while I'm doing that, I might as well turn this into sort of a um, live uh, brainstorming or idea generation session, right? Um, there must be some good stuff in here somewhere. Uh, since I could be bothered to write it down, uh, suggest that there might be something uh, decent in there. Um, and so there's also like a community and interactive aspect. Like if you see any uh, any sort of things that you think are interesting or there are ideas that you love or hate, um, you can let me know on Twitter or in the SMA Discord. Um, I'll leave the links in the description. I would love to uh, hear your thoughts. And um, yeah, so it kind of links with the first note I've got here, which is about asynchronous brainstorming. And that's sort of what gave me the idea to do this video. Um, so a bunch of us a while back, we had this idea to um, sort of reduce the amount of time we were spending on Discord. And it was very much influenced by one of Woz's um, FAQs on the Super Memory website, and I'll just try and pull it up right now. Um, right, so this question was all about, um, you know, Woz with his, uh, with his lifestyle, his aesthetic to do devotion to his work and his uh, creative pursuits. He doesn't like to spend and waste, I guess, in his um, in his opinion, the uh, waste time, uh, you know, traveling between meetings, um, calling people up to have conversations that might not be super uh, useful. Um, he suggested this idea uh, for a way to brainstorm with others um, at the perfect time. And he basically says here that, um, I think it's right here, yeah. In a brainstorming group, individuals ready for an intense net meeting exchange can set up a readiness flag. This is the real part that uh, that hooked me and a couple of other people, and await the moment when their readiness coincides with others in the same group. Okay, so this is the whole idea of asynchronous brainstorming. You uh, you somehow need to send a signal into the world um, that you are ready to brainstorm and no one else can see the signal. Um, completely independent of you, someone else decides that they're ready to brainstorm and they also send up the signal. Then the system matches those two people and alerts them both that they should go and chat about whatever ideas they have, okay? Um, so this idea, um, strategy pattern, Xander from the podcast, um, he actually built this prototype. He calls it um, ready to brainstorm. Um, I'd love to actually show it to you on the video, but I forgot my password. So I'm going to actually have to get him to reset, but it's really cool. It's like um, a website and there's just one button that says like ready. <laughs> and you click the button and if someone else clicks their button at the same time or they click it within a certain time frame, uh, a notification will pop up on your desktop and tell you that um, you know, so-and-so is ready to brainstorm, you should hop on Discord. Um, and so it was actually really successful. And um, at least uh, as a prototype, it, it seems to work quite well. And this is, I guess this um, video is sort of uh, another extension of that. Um, I'm trying to uh, share my ideas uh, in sort of a public way, learn with the garage door open, I think, as Andy Matushak put it in his notes. I really like that phrase and the whole idea behind it. Rather than locking ideas behind a closed door and just working on them in isolation, um, protecting them uh, until you've sort of um, 
uh, incubated them long enough that you can release them into the world. <laughs> what I prefer to do is, you know, put a bunch of stuff out there, see which ones people, which ideas um, people think are worth uh, discussing and uh, developing, and use that as like a barometer for which ideas are worth prioritizing higher than others. Okay, so I think we can move on to, I guess, the second note. Um, right, so yeah, this one reminds me of, um, oh, well, I mean, it was written when I was super interested in starting a machine learning project, and I still am. I'm right on the edge of being ready to um, actually go deep into starting this uh, project. There's just a couple more pieces I need to do. Um, but yeah, this was, uh, I, I really think machine learning is such a good um, domain to be studied in Supermemo because it touches so many different areas. I mean, since you're using Supermemo already, you're already interested in um, learning, approaches to learning and things like that. And there are so many par an analogies and parallels you, that you can draw between the ways that neural networks um, function and like how a human learns. And really the objective of um, machine learning is to create systems that can um, learn as well as humans uh, learn and better, obviously, in the future. Um, let's see. Nothing that interesting on this note. Let's move on. All right. I recognize this note immediately. This one is um, from uh, when was joined the Discord uh, unexpectedly on the 33rd anniversary, I think, of Supermemo. He just randomly came into the Discord and decided to sort of do a Q&A. He was just typing in the chat and uh, responding to people's questions. And these are basically a few of the notes that I took on that. Um, on that uh, meeting. So <laughs> I'll just type this up, actually. I think it's worth actually remembering, uh, storing uh, what happened on that day because it was so cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. It was so funny. It uh, was while he was um, responding to questions, he kept saying... Uh, I, maybe he just said this once, but it just made me laugh so hard. He said uh, he was holding his breath because he was so excited while uh, <laughs> responding to the questions. And I don't know, it just gave me, um, it kind of uh, gave me this idea of, you know, he was so excited, he was holding his breath. Are there any other um, physiological measures of when you're really interested in a topic? Um, some of the ideas I've had before are like eye tracking. I noticed in the uh, the video I did the other day, um, you know, I was sort of re-watching the video when I was editing it and I noticed like how my eyes were moving like <laughs> across uh, when I was reading and I was wondering, if, are there any, um, yeah, just any physiological signs that you can use to measure interest in a certain thing? And really the, the, um, the application of this for me would be, um, you know, are you able to record that sort of data in real time, for example, with a webcam, and maybe when you measure that a person's interest in when they're reading a topic, for example, if I'm um, reading this topic and there's some physiological signal that gets measured by the webcam, such as my eyes, you know, they start drifting or something, <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe it automatically just skips to the next topic for me because it's measured that my interest was so was was getting low. Like I often, um, I I don't think everyone agrees with me. I I've tried to make this point before, and other people just say you can just measure for yourself, you know, while you're reading how interested you are in a topic. But I I often find that I try and push through, <laughs> perhaps. Um, you know, even though my interest has started to drop, I always try and push on a little bit further because I, I still have the feeling sometimes that um, I feel like I have to get something uh, out of the topic before I move on. 
Uh, so I don't know. Uh, food for thought, right? Yeah, um, some other good stuff from there. Um, was his relentless optimism. Um, if things go bad, I just say, let's start learning. I thought that was such a good quote. And yeah, it just shows his um, relentless optimism in the, uh, in the face of adversity. And I really respected that. So I'm definitely going to keep that as a quote. Uh, I, might, I think I'll actually turn it into an item because it was that good. All right. Um, as for the rest of the stuff, uh, I don't think it's that useful. Let's move on. Hmm. This is one thing that interested me. Why there's very little interest, to, um, interest from machine learning engineers, people who are researching deep learning and machine learning. Why is there no interest from them in space repetition systems? Since, um, you know, the goal, as I just mentioned earlier, one of the goals of machine learning is to try and find ways to uh, emulate and improve on this, like the speed of human learning, especially, and how well, quickly we're able to uh, make sort of accurate generalizations, um, sometimes from very few instances. Uh, and we, we don't need to be trained on a huge amount of data to uh, recognize certain things and learn certain concepts. Um, I was curious as to why there was very little interest in people sort of studying uh the top ways in which people learn like the top techniques for human learning and maybe trying to find uh some things that they could apply to their research in machine learning and perhaps part of the reason is that uh just not many people know about um space repetition and if they do they're likely to encounter it in the context of language learning or uh, cramming for school basically um, and they don't think that that uh, the application of space repetition uh, they, they don't know about the application of um, space repetition for like creative pursuits like writing and stuff like that things that they might be more interested in um, so that's possible a, a more cynical way to perhaps think about it is that maybe they're so specialized into their domain that they just aren't looking um, outside of that domain. Um, I don't know. Um, let's see. Yeah, like I said earlier, uh, machine learning seems like such a great field for incremental reading and massive learning because it just covers so many different domains, like, uh, just endless, um, explorations that you could do, endless analogies that you could make and connections between many different fields. It would truly be uh, a multidisciplinary multi um, sort of project, which would be really cool. And just SM suits that sort of uh, inquiry very well. Um, yeah, this one was based on some thoughts I had about uh, space repetition algorithms. So a lot of people will uh, come into the Discord and they will ask about, um, you know, the algorithm that uh, Sumemo uses. Uh, I think it's SM18 or whatever, SM17, the algorithm. And... Um, Sometimes they're surprised to learn that was isn't really that interested in applying um, machine learning and neural networks to creating a better um, 
space repetition algorithm. At least that's as far as I know. I th you know what, I should check that right now just to be sure. But I, I do recall um, reading an article where he basically said something to that effect. Uh, right, yeah. So I think at least uh, from this article, I hope it's... Um, I hope it's up to date. Uh, going off this article, it seems like um, what I wrote was correct. So um, the whole idea behind was not really being interested in um, applying neural networks and machine learning to creating a better uh, space repetition algorithm is that he, uh, uh, he says here, um, neural networks have the capacity to re reveal patterns and approximate unknown functions. But for Woz, since he's developed this, um, I th yeah, two or three um, component model of uh, long-term memory in learning, uh, he believes that, um, you know, since he's already... It, like like learning for him it's it's a known function rather than an unknown function so he's going to stick with the um stick with the algebraic approach that he's already using okay guys um that's going to be it for today um i'm thinking about keeping some of these videos uh, a little bit shorter because i feel like the one i put up um yesterday that was just me doing IR for like 45 minutes not very many people are going to make it to the end um, so maybe I'll just keep this one shorter and uh, yeah please let me know if you like this style of video I'd be more than happy to do more I hardly got through any of these notes and I didn't even um, manage to uh, write many of them up into super memory because I just got distracted and I started talking and rambling so uh, let me know if you like this style of video um, I'd love to hear your feedback. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.